Hello again, this is Ultimate Academy's team presenting Onyx Financial Track. Uh, this is lecture number 11 and just a quick recap on what we studied before. Uh, we've already explained system setup and general ledger. Now in this lecture we're going to start a new module which is Inventory Management System. We'll start with Inventory Parameters screen. As we can see here, it includes five tabs. In this lecture, we will just discuss the first tab, which is the variables. Um, let's start with the first field, which is item code length. This one determines the number of digits that you will use to record the item number. As for date generation and document sequence, both contain the same options in the drop down menu, which are system generated modifiable, and that one means that the system will automatically generate the date and the sequence. However, the user will have the option to make modifications for both. Manual means that you will manually enter both. System generated non-modifiable means that the system will generate uh, the uh, date and document sequence. However, it will not allow any sort of modifications. Cost method has the options FIFO and another one, average. FIFO is an abbreviation for first in, first out. Now, this one is really helpful for medical and cosmetics activities, and it means that if we have um, 800 pieces of whatever item and the cost is 40 per piece, dollar or pound, that makes the total 32,000 for this item on this specific date, which is January 1st in this example. Then on February 5th, we purchased 600 pieces, 50 a piece. That makes the total for that one 30,000. Now on March 7th, we sold 400 pieces. The system will automatically register the sale that it was from the first quantity that was added, which was 40 a piece. That of course, if we choose FIFO. Now we have 400 remaining from the first batch. The 600 uh, and 600 remaining basically from the second. Here the system will calculate each cost separately according to the batch. That explains FIFO. Now the second option that we have here is average. Now how does that one work? Let's demonstrate that through an example because it's just easier that way. Let's say that on January 1st we have a starting balance of 800 pieces. $40 a piece or whatever, um, or pound I mean, and the total cost would be $32,000. Then on February 5th, you made a purchase for 600 pieces, $50 a piece, that makes the total $30,000. There's an equation for working out the average cost per piece, which is the total cost of inventory divided by the total units in the inventory. That makes the average cost per unit, according to this equation in our example, $44.29. Alright, so that is cost method. Moving on to the following field. Warehouse and income in sequence and also transfer sequence, stock in sequence and also stock adjustment serial. All of those fields have the same options in the drop down menu, which are accumulative, by type, by warehouse code, and by type and warehouse code. Note that you will have to unify the choice for all of those four fields uh, or sequences for easier auditing in the future. Use multi cost center in incoming and use multi cost center in warehouse transfer. The choices are not use single and multi. Not use, of course, is self-explanatory. Single means that there will be one field for the cost center in the transactions. All the items in that transaction will be linked to that cost center. Multi, however, means that you can have several fields um, for cost centers in the transactions, and you can assign even a cost center for each item. Use projects in incoming order, outgoing order, warehouse transfer, and also in stock adjustments, all contain the same options as well, which is not use, single, and multi. We already explained what each of those, uh, of those options would do or 
the changes that it would make. Reorder level, the drop down menu here contains three choices by item, by item and warehouse, by item and branch. Reorder level basically allows the user to order or reorder an item when the stock of that item is running low or below a certain level. Now what does those options basically mean or the changes that it would make? Buy item means that if the stock runs low in one warehouse then the system will allow you to reorder that item across every warehouse and every branch in your enterprise or company. Buy item and warehouse means that if the item is below a certain quantity it will allow you to reorder only in the warehouse that's running short on that item. For example, if we have warehouse A and B uh, that are both in the same company and warehouse A has reached the reorder level of an item, then only warehouse A is allowed to reorder. By item and branch is the same concept of the warehouse, but this one is for the branches that accompany. All right, so moving on to item coding type, uh, the options we have are alphanumeric or numeric, inventory post methods by item group or by warehouse group. The difference between both of these options is if it's by item group, then uh, that is in case we've divided our items into groups, then the posting here will be per group. By warehouse group, uh, that one means that it will post the warehouses with all the items it contains. The variable allowed to use deleted documents numbers. Now, if you, if you activate this variable, basically, the system will allow you to use the deleted document numbers in the transactions. Warehouse average type has the options by item, by item and warehouse, and by item and warehouse group. Um, if we choose by item, then it will calculate the average uh, by item for each item separately. By item and warehouse, then it will calculate the average per item in addition to the warehouse expenses. By item and warehouse groups, same idea as by item and warehouse, except that here it will add the expenses of the group of warehouses altogether, in addition, of course, to the cost of that item. Warehouse at go in sequence and warehouse request sequence both contain the same choices. Uh, and before we explain what these choices are, note that you will need to unify the choices you save between all of these three fields uh, or all of these fields basically for easier auditing. A cumulative um, by type by warehouse code, by type and warehouse code. A cumulative means that uh, basically the transactions will be numbered according to the right order. By type means that it will sort the transactions according to the type. By warehouse code means that it will sort the transactions for each warehouse separately. By type and warehouse code means that it will sort according to the type of the transaction and the warehouse as well. All right, so moving on to the following field, item pricing. The five choices are by item. So basically the pricing will come for each item individually. By item and warehouse means that the pricing of the same item can be different um, from one, one warehouse to the other. By item and quantity means that the pricing of the same item can be different according to the quantity or the batch that you're selling. By item, warehouse and quantity um, and the last choice is by item and branch. Assemble document serial, a cumulative and by type. Use multi call center and outgoing. The options are not used, single and multi. Use multi call center in stock adjustments. Uh, same options, same idea. Use activity in incoming order, outgoing order, in warehouse transfer and in stock adjustment not use, single, and multi. Then we have the variable fixing data. If you activate this variable, then you can fix the main data in the transactions. To explain this point, let's say that you bring up the transaction screen and you place a new transaction. You will be asked to enter the main data, which is the date, the branch, and so on. 
you will enter that information and make the transaction after you save that transaction if you stay on the same screen and you add a new transaction the system will fill in the main data will basically um, it will be automatic according to the fixed data on the previous transaction um, the field after that is create a sales cause journal um, in case we're creating sales invoice uh, a sales invoice the system automatically creates a daily journal for the cost of the sold items consequently the cost of the stock itself will be reduced mandatory determine reference number if you activate this variable the user will not be able to save the transaction unless they enter the reference number enter description mandatory same idea the user has to enter a description use expiry date activating this variable will populate a new field um, in the item detail screen for expiry date entry allow alternative items this is kind of in depth for specific activities like pharmacies for example show item description that one will add um, like basically a column in the item detail screen for adding description per item show item size uh, same idea show description per item and show item description that we've just explained both of them will create the same changes Connect with General Ledger. Here we're linking the whole inventory module with the General Ledger module. In case we want to basically run the inventory system separately, then we will leave this variable unchecked, uh, which means that all the transactions incoming and outgoing will not directly um, impact the transactions. Use multi warehouses. Here, here basically we can add more than one warehouse for the company and if we leave it unchecked then we're dealing with a single warehouse use multi warehouses for incoming and outgoing if we activate these two variables then we can receive and dispatch from more than one warehouse in the same transaction connect subgroup with main group uh, connect subgroup with subgroup connect assisting group with groups and connect detail group with groups that is in case we use stock groups to identify the items now onyx gives you six groups so you can link any number of groups you're using with one another so it would come up on the item code connect activity by warehouse and cost center here we can link a specific warehouse to a specific cost center so for example um, Let's say that we're dispatching an item from warehouse A and we had it linked to cost center number one. The cost of that dispatched item will automatically reflect on cost center number one. All right, so that's everything that we have for this tab and everything for lecture 11. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we will see you again in the upcoming lecture.